the new album is out just a couple weeks ago. Um, well, this time you went to Los Angeles to record it mm -hmm. instead of recording it here in Europe, and also you changed producers, Jason, right? Yeah. Right. So why did you make all these changes? Uh, you were not uh, comfortable with what you were getting here in Europe, or you want to just try something different? No, mainly it was something different. We felt like doing something new. You know, try. We wanted to do something maybe in a warmer weather. You know, we recorded yeah. in Sweden and England, and you know, sometimes in the, in the winter. So we like, let's do something, try something different. You know, to get a yeah. new experience. And Los Angeles is pretty much a uh, rock and roll city. You know, that's where all right. the stuff is happening. So we decided to check what kind of producers because Andy Sneap he couldn't couldn't have done it anyway because yeah. he's out touring with Judas Priest. So. Yeah. And we felt like maybe it's time to try something new. So we went to L.A., talked to different producers and see what they could yeah. bring to the table and uh, looked at different studios. And then we found something we, we liked. Good. We talked to Jay Rustin and he had some cool ideas how right. to record. The studio was amazing, like first-class studio. So it was really nice. Yeah, I think the producers you are used to use in the past uh, albums and they were used to record or produce metal bands and yeah. Jason in this case he, he also works with pop uh, bands different yeah, kind yeah. of bands yeah, right? yeah, so did you a... notice a difference actually? Uh... No, a little bit I mean the way they work is maybe a little bit different you know he's, yeah. he's been working on some uh, like big pop productions and stuff and but I mean he's he's a metal head also you know he, he's, he likes heavy metal and he's been playing himself in bands so it was not a huge difference you know yeah. it's just details how he is working you know in the studio but right it's, it's no no big differences really good uh, I read somewhere that I don't know if it is true but uh, that uh, the guitars on this album the guitar and some other instruments you want to just kind of get the vibe of the classic heavy metal bands that um, I know that you love uh, Iron Maiden and all these bands yeah. so and um, you want to try to um, not a mule but try to get a sound similar to these bands these classic heavy yeah, well, bands do you think so? Or? yeah I think that was one of the ideas you know working with a different producer you know have it try to get away a little bit from that because otherwise you get pretty much the same sound all the time so we were aiming to get especially the guitars more uh, more old school heavy metal sound yeah and also the drums are a little bit different you know more more big room like more uh, acoustic kind of feeling so but try to mix that with the modern style you know? right so i think that the main the biggest difference is probably the guitars are more both the way we play the melodies and also the sound is a bit more heavy metal this album but still but still a package in a death metal style great um, you know, uh, well, most of the people identify you because all the, the biking team that you use. Yeah. But uh, actually there is a genre that is biking metal. Yeah. But I think you're more into death metal, right? Do you consider yourself in any stage? Because I think you were in Amon Mars since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. In some stage of your career, do you consider yourself biking metal or just death no, metal? I mean, it's, uh, it depends on, you know, all these different names of different yeah. styles, you know. Are people we, identify are, are, battery are, yeah, for example like biking yeah, metal yeah. exactly but I mean music the music like if you take the guitars and drums and everything that's yeah. on the vocals that's melodic death metal yeah. but, but we're singing about vikings and our image is about vikings so I mean we fit in both both styles you know you, you can call us viking metal or but maybe melodic viking death metal you know <laughs> you try to mash it all together yeah. so yeah it could be anything you know? yeah um, you know, um, bands like Scorpions were playing yesterday at the festival, mm -hmm. you know, um, well, they are still huge, but they're getting older and older, so yeah. there will be a time where you won't have Scorpions at headliners yeah. and some people will have to replace them as yeah. headliners. Yeah. Do you see yourselves in that position in, let's say, 10 years? I don't know. You know, maybe right now I think we might be just a little bit too extreme <laughs> for the for the big big masses. Yeah. But, but yeah, definitely. I mean, all these bigger bands are quitting one by one. You know, so there has to be new bands filling those shoes. And maybe who those bands gonna be is gonna be tricky to say. And uh, we're gonna try to to take as much space as possible. You know, f from our side. But you know, you never know what people are gonna like. And we don't know how how are we gonna sound in ten years. Maybe we 
became softer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have a festival also in Spain, but in the south. It's called Rote Coast, and Wardruna were playing there, mm -hmm. and they're very known for doing the the music on on the Viking series, yes. right? So I assume you are you watch the show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, a lot of people criticize the show, especially people from, I think, uh, Norway or Scandinavia, yeah. because there are no historical facts on the series, actually. Did you get, at some point in your career, criticisms because there are no historical things on your lyrics, maybe? I mean, we, we, uh, we try to mix, you know, because if you're only going to be historically correct, you know, that's... It's going to be less to write about, and, and it's maybe more boring. You know, yeah, it's. I see our thing is more uh, is entertainment. You know, we try to to keep it like historically correct sometimes, but sometimes we we just go fantasy. Like like our our stage, we got this helmet with two big horns, and I mean the helmets didn't really have horns on yeah. the Vikings, but it's still a it's still what people associate with Vikings. Vikings. So yeah. we think like yeah, and it looks better on stage you know without horns it looks mm, so that and then if you add the horns it looks fucking amazing so sometimes you have to skip the correct yeah. historical to make a, a good show you know right uh talking about the live show you also have a couple of guys fighting during your show mm -hmm. <laughs> who are those guys are part of your team or do you take yeah, them nah. specially on tour to do that part of the show or they are well, also they're... doing something else <laughs> well right right now the guys we have now they're actually they're crew guys yeah they, they work on stage building the stage and yeah. doing stuff and also fighting and sometimes we have uh, uh when we can we have more guys but those are like the real uh, like in the videos and stuff we have uh, those Viking reenactments yeah. the guys who really fight for real so yeah. these guys are more like for, for the show and, and but if we can we bring more guys into to the show right so going back to the lyrics issue I know um, there is this band from Finland Amorphis yep. okay and they are also thematic in some sort of way because they always speak on their albums about uh, the Kalevala the, yep. the book yep. about the, the myths in Finland so um, I know that they have someone especially to write their lyrics yeah. to be historically correct yeah. during on the Kalevala. So, who write your lyrics? You write your lyrics? Do you have yeah. someone who no, does no, for you? It's our singer, Johan, yeah. who writes everything. But he, yeah. he knows, he's been reading about Vikings his whole life. So, yeah. he's, he's actually very semi professional. Like, he knows all about this uh, the history and the mythology. So yeah. We don't really need to bring someone in, you know. He he knows what everything we need to know, basically. Yeah. So it's it's easy for us. Good. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Andy Smith before. He produced your album. Uh, produced album. Um, he's uh, doing his dream come true now, playing with the yeah. Judas Priest live. You know, that's yeah. amazing. So, if it is your case and you have a chance to play bass with any band you like, who would you choose to play? I don't know. I mean. Of course, Iron Maiden is my, Iron Maiden. <laughs> is my favorite band, but it would be really tricky to fill Steve, Steve Harris' Harris, uh, shoes, uh, I don't know, but yeah, that would be one of the bands I, I would love, it's like a dream yeah. come true, like a childhood dream to yeah. play with a band like that. Maybe Slayer, of course, is also one of those, but they're quitting, so now it's going to be tricky. Well, actually, <laughs> you are, I don't know if the, the tour already on the US, right? Oh, that we did that before. Which you did yeah, before, right? Just right before the summer, we did right. it. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was amazing playing with them. Do you so, really think they're gonna retire? Yeah, at least for now, I think. Uh, yeah, at least for I, I know years. that. I know that they're like some of them are really tired of touring, so yeah. they really want to quit. But you never know. Maybe in five years they're gonna be they're gonna miss it or come back. But I'm pretty sure they this this is his end for now, and then what the future has. Nobody knows. Yeah. So they also had issues with drummers, as yeah. you. Um, actually, this is the first album that you recorded with your new drummer. Yeah. Right. So, what do you think about all the drama that was uh, putting on the media regarding the exit of your previous drummer? He spoke about it, and then Johanna spoke yeah. about it. So. Yeah, and I, things like that. You know, of course, it gets infected when you have two two different views. You know, two two different opinions, and it was like. It was okay when we when we separated, and then it was like for nothing for maybe two years, and then this kind of like little war started. But it was like 
for us, I mean, it's now it's more than what is it four four years ago, maybe since since he left. I mean, we're we we continue, you know, we don't have yeah. time for for drama going yeah. on, you know. Do you see because um, at this point, at this level, we can say that um, no more is doing this professionally. It's your work, so yeah. that you have to do. Um, do you think that? Someone is replaceable at this point on the Monomar lineup. I mean, like I don't know if you need to replace a guitar. Well, yeah. you have to I'm, do it. You do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing, the, the only one, the only guy in the band who's like completely not replaceable. That's Johan, our singer, because yeah. that it's really hard to replace. But I mean, everybody else, it's possible to replace. Maybe in the end, the band will not survive. But it's possible to to. Uh, to replace everybody, you no, know, or anybody yeah. except for a singer. But uh, everybody has different. I mean, if you're the main songwriter, that's that's gonna mean if you quit, then it's gonna be maybe not as good songs, and then yeah. you will, the band will die in the end, anyways. Mm -hmm. But for like in a short term, the only guy who you can't replace is the singer. Yeah. All right. So, do you normally see what other bands do? Um, Maybe to try to improve yourselves, not in, in sounding wise, but I don't know, stage wise, maybe. Yeah. Do you normally follow what other bands are doing, like, uh, oh, look that pyro, or look yeah, yeah, what they yeah, do. Yeah. They have. yeah, always. I mean, you always have to try to become better. Like you, you. That's that's like evolution. You know how how bands get better. You listen to other bands. You know, maybe a band release a new album, and you find something that influences you, or yeah. you watch a band on a festival, and wow, that looks super cool. You know, right. and then that starts ideas in your head. Like maybe we should do something like this. And I think all band is stealing from each other. You know, right. just, uh, that's how that's how things work. You know, you you see something you think is cool, and then you try to make your own version of that. Right. So everybody's... Oh, okay.